In this video, we are going to discuss final property of property of autocorrelation function of energy signal. So, here we are going to cover same spectral property which, which we discussed earlier under spectral properties. That means, the fourth property in this autocorrelation function is nothing but one of the spectral property. You can see here, we already discussed this property under spectral properties autocorrelation function and energy spectral density are Fourier transform pairs. Under spectral properties, I told you autocorrelation function and power spectral density are uh, Fourier transform pairs. Whenever a signal is said to be power, then we can say autocorrelation and power spectral density are Fourier transform pairs. Whenever a signal is said to be an energy signal, then we can say autocorrelation function and energy spectral density are Fourier transform pairs. So, spectral density is said to be energy spectral density when the signal is energy. For example, for a signal, you are going to calculate spectral density. So, how will calculate spectral density? For example, if you are having signal x of t, the spectrum of signal can be obtained by taking Fourier transform or Laplace transform, any transform. Spectrum is nothing but frequency domain of the signal. So, here the spectrum of the signal is nothing but frequency domain of the signal which can be obtained by considering Fourier transform of this time domain signal we got the spectrum here. So, then how we will get spectral density? By squaring this spectrum, you are going to get spectral density. That means, by considering modulus of x of omega whole square, you are going to get spectral density. So, here this spectral density, th this is spectral density S d, this is called as energy spectral density whenever signal is energy signal, same spectral density, same spectral density is said to be power spectral density whenever your signal for which you calculated the spectrum and whole square spectral density. Then this is called as power spectral density whenever your signal is power signal. For any signal we can calculate spectral density. Why? Because if you are having any signal, if that is Fourier transformable or Laplace transformable, you can find the spectrum of the signal. You can find the spectrum of the signal. So, that means by taking Fourier or Laplace, you, you can get the frequency domain of the signal. Frequency domain of the signal is nothing but spectrum of the signal. By squaring that spectrum, you are going to get spectral density. When that signal which given that spectral density is an energy signal, then that spectral density is called as energy spectral density. For example, if the signal is power signal, which given this spectral density, then that spectral density came by that power signal is called as power spectral density. That is only the difference. Now, we need to prove autocorrelation function and energy spectral density or Fourier transform pairs. So, this property we already discussed in uh, spectral properties here I am going to prove that property. So, now I want to consider Fourier transform of R of tau. So, you know Fourier transform equation for any signal. For any signal if you want Fourier transform you need to multiply with e power minus j omega t and you need to integrate that is it. So, if you want Fourier transform of any signal just multiply with a negative exponential and you need to integrate in the limits. So, I am writing the equation integral minus infinity to infinity, your signal is in tau domain that is why I am taking my transform is also in tau domain. So, that means R of tau e power minus j omega tau d tau. I consider my transform in tau domain because I am having my signal in tau domain. So, now coming to here where r of tau is nothing but autocorrelation function. Here r of tau is a autocorrelation function. You know the equation for autocorrelation function. So, this is equal to minus infinity to infinity autocorrelation function is nothing but measure of similarity between x of t and x of t plus tau or t minus tau. So, t minus tau d tau dt. So, this is the equation for autocorrelation function of a signal. 
So now, so here I am going to consider e power minus j omega tau d tau also. Here you can see, I just consider the remaining thing. In place of r of tau, I use it to write this formula of autocorrelation function. So here I want to consider something like this, integral minus infinity to infinity, integral minus infinity to infinity, x of t, x of t minus tau and uh, when I am writing this exponentials, I want to write like this, e power minus, e power uh, not minus, e power plus j omega t, e power plus j omega t and e power minus j omega t dt d tau. So, and here already you are having e power minus j omega tau also. You can see what I done in this step is I just multiplied e power j omega t into e power minus j omega t extra. I just included these two multiplication of these two extra. If I added also there is no effect why because e power j theta into e power minus j theta e power minus j into theta minus theta e power 0 e power 0 is equivalent to 1 there would not be any effect when I done like this. So, here I considered e power j omega t into e power minus j omega t and here already I am having e power minus j omega tau dt and d tau. Now, I want to separate this integrals into two like this. So, here in the next step I want to separate my integrals. So, this is equal into that means Fourier transform of R of tau whatever you are writing all this is for Fourier transform of R of tau is equal into I want to consider my first integration integral minus infinity to infinity. I want to consider x of t and e power minus j omega t dt x of t e power minus j omega t dt this is in one integration into another integration I am going to write here integral minus infinity to infinity in another integration another signal is x of t minus tau x of t minus tau into so you can see here I am having e power minus j omega tau and here I am having e power j omega t in these two if I take in common of j omega you are going to get t minus tau so here e power minus j omega t minus tau so d tau. So like this I separated my integrals I am having both dt and d tau. So now you can see here this is nothing but Fourier transform of x of t. So what is the Fourier transform of x of t? Multiplying with a negative exponential and integrating in the limits. So, we can say this is Fourier transform of x of t. Fourier transform of x of t we can represent like x of omega. So, now into in this I want to consider some considerations. I want to consider t minus tau is equivalent to n. If, if I want to consider t minus tau is equivalent to n, then t is equivalent to n plus tau where tau is a constant shift. So, if I consider dt then it will be equivalent to dn why because differentiation of constant is equivalent to 0. We are making this shift value to a time we are equating that shifted time period to a fundamental time period n. So, here I consider dt that is equivalent to dn. So, here I am going to write that integral minus infinity to infinity in place of t minus tau I am going to write n and e power minus j omega n dn in place of d tau or in uh, whatever we are considering sorry here we can see we need to consider in tau domain. So, we need to consider in tau domain means how we can consider in tau domain. So, you, you need to consider tau domain means t minus tau here we are not having d t if you are having d t you can treat your tau as constant but here you are having d tau. So, like this we can make mistakes. So, here t minus tau is equivalent to n I can consider but tau as the equation is in tau domain tau you need to treat it as variable 
and T you need to treat it as constant shift. So, here T minus N is equivalent to T where dt is equivalent to minus dn. So, here I am just substituting all this after substituting I am going to get minus here because dt is equivalent to d tau is equivalent to d tau is equivalent to minus dn here if you consider differentiation then d tau will be is equivalent to minus dn if I consider minus dn here I am going to get minus here and here if you observe this equation, this minus I am writing here as these two are in multiplication x of omega n2. Here this is also in the form of Fourier transform. If n is any time period, if n is, is equivalent to any time period, that means you are calculating your Fourier transform in n domain. You can replace n by t now. For example, in the next step, if you replace n with t, then what will come? x of t e power minus j omega t dt. So, then that equation also you can write like x of omega. So, now I can write this as modulus of x of omega whole square. Modulus of x of omega whole square is nothing but spectral density. So, this is nothing but spectral density which spectral density it is? It is power spectral density or energy spectral density. We considered the signal x of t as energy signal. So, the spectral density calculated for that signal is equivalent to energy spectral density and always indicated with psi of omega. Power spectral density PSD is always indicated with S of omega whereas energy spectral density always indicated with psi of omega. So, you can see you consider the Fourier transform of R of tau if you calculated that by using this correlation function you are going to get energy spectral density. So, Fourier transform of autocorrelation function is equivalent to energy or power spectral density, but here we can say that is energy spectral density. Why? Because we consider the signal as energy signal. So, the Fourier transform of autocorrelation function of that energy signal will give you energy spectral density of the signal.